know, I've been thinking this whole week about God, how he pursues us. I don't know if you've ever thought about it. There's a song that talks about, you know, God chases us down. He comes after us and he goes after us. And, and we are talking about the creator of the universe pursuing us, pursuing me, uh, pursuing you. Uh, that he goes out of his way. The creator, he chases us in spite of our shortcomings, in spite of us. He chases us down and, and he comes in spite of our failures, in spite of our pride. He comes and he says, I'm chasing you. I'm coming after you. I'm coming for you. You know, we didn't choose him, but he chose us. While we were still seen as Christ died, on the cross for us and 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 that whole idea if i am you know to be honest here i wouldn't have chosen me i, I wouldn't have chosen me and if i was god i wouldn't have chosen me and, you know i mean let's just really be real here you know uh, i just you know i know who i am i know my past failures i know my failures now i know the things that i'll be involved in and still god chose me I'm sure if you're honest, you wouldn't choose yourself either. If you actually look at your own life and you say, actually, if I was God, would I choose me? You wouldn't have chosen yourself either. But the God we, 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 you know, we worship, he still chose us. Even when we are outside, he still said, I'm choosing you. I, I, I'm choosing you. I'm coming after you. You, as, as broken as you are, you, with all your failures and with all the cracks in your life, I am choosing you. Does that blow your mind? Does that, you, you, I mean, we all, you know, fail, all of us. You know, I don't know, Jojo, I don't know. Help me understand, you know. Uh, you know, sometimes I look at myself and I say, God, you chose me. You are the creator. You put the, you hang the stars into space. You created this whole world, and yet you are interested in me. You, I don't know, church. I think have we become too familiar with God that actually we there is a disconnect between the God we worship, the God we sing about, the God we talk about, the God we preach about. And actually how broken and how weak we are, you know, have we become too familiar with God that actually God chooses you? He chooses you, church. Uh, he chooses me. And I'm, I'm talking about this, this huge creator, this huge creator, you know, we can't even fathom him. You know, he's so indescribable. We can't even describe him. We can't even exhaust him. We can't even comprehend him. This huge creator chooses you. I, I, I'm like, man, you know, he, you know, through the book of Ephesians, he chooses to write a love letter to you, to me. And he chooses to say, I love you. And he sent this love letter that created that, you know, this, this blows my mind when I'm thinking about it. This is just, it just literally overwhelms me. I'm like, how can he choose me? How can he love me? How, I mean, hey. How can the creator of the universe look at you, Sister Clarice, and he says, I choose you. I mean, the earth, just think of the earth. The earth is literally like a speck, you know, like a speck, a dust. And yet he says, in the midst of all creation, all the galaxies, I choose you. I choose you. Uh, that's, this is huge. This is a big deal, church. This, this, this is, this is mind-blowing, and, and I, I, I struggle with that, and sometimes we all struggle with that. You know, as I was reading, and I was just thinking, you know, because sometimes I read it, and I bypass it, and I say, no, it's not impacting me enough. Let me read it one more time. What are you talking about, God? When I read the book of Ephesians, you know, just reading the first few verses, it hits me, and I'm saying, no, I just missed that. Let me just go back again and just read again. What are you saying, God? You're saying you chose me? You're saying that before the world was created, 
you knew me before even I was in my mother's womb. You were there, God, the creator of the universe. How can I not worship this God? How can I not respond? Why do I drag my feet when I come to worship? And I'm like, oh no, I only worship when it feels like. I only come to him when I feel like it. Wow. The creator of the universe chooses us. Listen to what he says. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ just as he chose us in him. What did he do? He chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons and daughters by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Uh, this has everything to do with God. It has nothing to do with you and I. This is everything. He did this before the foundation of the world. Uh, he, he, only he gets the credit and it's mind-blowing. Can you imagine reading this for the first time? I, I'm just thinking of the Ephesians, you know, when they were there, the people in Ephesians, you know, the, in, in Ephesus, as they were reading this about this God and they're hearing Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed you. God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And they are hearing all of this. Can you imagine? You open it. It's like a, a, it's like a love letter and God says to you, God chose you. I, I, listen, I, I received lots of love letters uh, in my life, you know, and, and, and men, and I remember many of them, uh, we used to, you know, I, I received this one, and it used to say, I love you like a banana without a bond. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And somebody would say, you know, uh, I love you, and this and this, and all of that. I know you're all pretending like you're Christians now. I'm sure you've written things like that. But as I was growing up, I remember my first letters. Those are kind of things out here. You, you know, I love you to the moon and back, and you are everything. And many times it's all oh, hogwash. Oh uh, but the God, the creator of the universe, through his love letter, and he's saying, I chose you. I chose you. Last week I was saying, many of us here, we suffer from rejection, have gone through lots of rejection. The creator writes a love letter to you, to me. And he says, I chose you. I chose you. And, and the people are reading it, you know, for the first time, and it feel, they, you know, they feel so insecure, they are broken, and, and they just hear, God chose you. God chose you. In the midst of all your brokenness, God chose you, and then God predestined you. He knew, uh, he knew, he foreknew this would happen, and God adopted you. You are now a child of God. You're not defined by what happens in the world. You are a child of God. That's who you are. Do not listen to what the enemy says. You are a child of God. Wow. A child of God is who we are, and that's what he says here. You know, uh, uh, you know, what a beautiful picture of adoption that God adopted us. You know, he adopted you. For what? Why? Well, Scripture says in love. But why in love? To fulfill his will. Uh, and, and, and so it, it's all he's doing. We, what, what a God we serve, church. The God who goes out of his way that even when we were when we wouldn't choose ourselves, he still chose us. When others run away from us, God still say, I choose you. Remember last week I told you about my football experience and people come, they size you up, they look at you and they say, no, I don't want you. I want this one. God walks with all your failings, with all your brokenness, with all my brokenness, with all my failures. God says, I choose you. I, I, I just couldn't go past that church. I, I, you know, I want us to, to remember that. I ask you, church, this morning, I ask you to submit to God's word. 
I ask you, I implore you, I urge you, church, believe what the word says about you. Because the enemy will tell you otherwise. And so I ask you to submit to the word of God. The word of God doesn't belong here. The word of God doesn't even belong here. The word of God belongs here. That's where it belongs. And so as you move about, it's the word of God that guides you. It's the word of God that, that, that informs you. It's the word of God that instructs you in everything you do. Do not let the word of God go there and you become there. No matter the circumstances, church, the word of God should be the one that informs us. We should submit to the word of God. I have to be honest, I struggle sometimes with the word of God to submit to everything in the word of God, sometimes. And I'm sure if you're honest, there are things you struggle to submit in there. But the truth of the matter is God doesn't ask us if you want to or not. He says you got to submit. Remember Joshua was being told that actually do not let this book Depart from your mouth, because when this book is not in your mouth, is not buried inside of you, as the word says that your word have I hid in my heart, so that I may not sin against you. You want to walk right with God? You want to be fulfilled in life? Submit yourself to the word. Let the word be your informer. I love the word. Let the word inform your everyday life in everything you do. Don't put the word of God there and, and you are there or, and you exalt yourself and, and what you want or what you know everybody wants. But actually say, God, let your word be my guide. Yesterday, last night I was just saying to, to Trey, we were out with, um, with the Transformers, and I was just saying to him, pray, you know, read your Bible, pray every day. That's my advice to Trey. Read your Bible, pray every day. Read your Bible. Don't let the word move away from you. Don't let the word depart from you. And I want to encourage you, church. I want to encourage you. Give yourself to the word. And so I'm asking you in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to just, you know, submit ourselves to, to, the, to the word and just reaffirm ourselves again to say, God, we say yes to your word. We submit. We humble ourselves. I'm going to ask you to just pray with me. Um, you know, and just ask God to help us here today so that we can receive God's word as he has it for us today. And we don't want to debate the word of God. You know, there are some people who just want to debate. I want us to hear the word as the people who heard it for the first time, the way they heard it. They heard it fresh and they were still wrestling. They were broken and they were hearing God chose you. God loves you. And so pray with me, church. Father, your word is above us. Your word is superior, Lord. We submit this morning to it. We hold your word high, Father. Lord, I, I, I bow my knee right now, Father, before you. And Lord, we say, Lord, we submit to your word, Father. Not our will, but your will be done, God. Lord, many of us here, we struggle, Father, to submit to the word, but today, we come, Lord, and just say we are submitting ourselves to everything the Word says. Whatever you say, Father, I just pray right now, tenderize our hearts and tenderize our minds, Father, to be able to hear your Word in truth and in spirit, O oh God. And Father, not just be hearers, but actually we begin to apply the Word to our everyday life, Lord. Let your word shape us this morning and let your word transform us this morning, Father. We worship you and we bow before you because you are worthy of our praise, God. We exalt your name, Father. And Lord, I just pray, may we hide. Let your word just speak for itself today, Father. And hit us one more time, Father, with the power of your word, oh God. And we will go home transformed and changed by your word, Father. And so we come before you. We surrender ourselves to you, God. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. And somebody say the amen. amen. Amen, amen, amen. We give God thanks for what he's doing. Church, here's my, my, my desire. This is my desire. I want the word of God to be present in this church. And I want the word of God to be present and manifest in our lives. Uh, you know, we can, you know, it would be a shame if we come here and we do not let the word of God transform us. It will become a burial society, a club 
when this word is not shaping and, and informing us. And so I pray that, you know, uh, God will see your glory in this place. And I pray that I'll be the best pastor that I can be, God helping me. And I want to see God and only God what he can do happen in this place. We want to see lives transformed. We want to see lives changed. We want to see people being transformed from wherever they are, God changing them. If we come here and we stay the same and we allow the flesh to dominate, we will miss. It will be a shame for us, you know, you know, if we live this life as Christians and never experience the power of the God in the Bible. You know, I read the, the God in the Bible and what he does. It will be a shame for us to, um, to come here and never experience the power of, of God in our lives. Now, we will not experience the power of God unless we submit ourselves to the word. Uh, we, we can sing, I can preach, and we can talk, and we can keep ourselves, we can entertain ourselves. But unless this word is really challenging us and provoking us, Everything else we do is just a club. It will be a huge shame, church. And I want to encourage all of us. Let the word inform us. Whatever happens, whatever we do, let the word be the superior authority. Not, my, not what I say, but what the word say. And say we will bow down to the word and, and we ask God to speak to us um, in that. So again, when we don't experience the, um, the power of God, we're actually cheapening the glory of God. When God sees you and me coming through those doors, God is excited. He, he is passionate. He's, they are coming to worship me. And he, he loves to bless each and every one of us here. He loves to meet us at our point of need. And so when we come here and when we come and we, 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 do not, we don't submit ourselves to the word, it's a huge shame. It's a, it's a waste of our time and the waste of everybody's time. It's a waste of your time. If I'm going to show up, I'm going to show up. I'm not going to come half-hearted. And I'm going to say, God, poke me, challenge me. And I'll be the first one to lift my hand. It is painful when God begins to do work. And sometimes I fight against it. We've got to become to that place where we say, you are God, not my will, but your will be done in my life. And so I want to encourage you, whatever you find yourself today, submit to God. Submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Last week I talked about Ephesians chapter 1, where it talks about God chose us, that God chose us, and God predestined us, and God adopted us. And I was saying last week, these three words have caused lots of divisions in the church. These three words have caused the church to, to have splits. And, and, and uh, let me just briefly recap what I said last week and what I talked about. Here's what I did. I talked about Calvinism versus Arminianism. Does God choose us or do we choose God? Uh, uh, basically, that's the, that's the argument there, and that's the question that comes in. Uh, uh, and sometimes, you know, I look at it, I was talking to someone midweek, and they said, you know, I am, uh, you know, um, I, I am Cal um, Aminium. I'm Cal, uh, Cal Aminium. Uh, that's what they said. And I said, oh, all right. He says, yeah. I said, I, I like some of the things that Calvin says, and I like some of the things that Aminian said, you know, talks about Jacobus. Remember that guy? And, and I don't know, uh, you know, but there will be some things that you say, yes, God chose us. Um, yes, we chose God. And sometimes it's, it's, it's sort of a back and forth, back and forth. And so that's what we were talking about that. But um, we talked about that. And here's what I don't want to do this morning. I don't want us to take away from what Paul is talking about. There will be some of you here who are coming just for arguments. All right, let me just argue about this. I am not for that. I, I, I really am not for that. I don't want to take away from what Paul is saying. I want to submit to the word of God and I want to say, you know, uh, I, I want the heart of what Paul was talking about when he wrote this passage, you know, inspired by God. Uh, because here is the reality. When they received this letter, they didn't have this filter of Calvinism and Arminianism to filter this passage. We now have these filters that we have. And so when we are looking at God's word, sometimes we can miss what God is saying. Because we are now looking at it through these filters that other human beings have wrestled with. And so I say to God, God, just, just, just hit me with your word. I want to experience 
what they felt when they heard that for the first time without you know, Calvin or without Jacobus. You know, I want to be able to experience that, so I don't want to filter it through that either. So let's put that aside, the Calvinism and, and Arminianism. Let's put that aside. In fact, what Charles Spurgeon says when asked, how do you reconcile these truths? How, how do you reconcile? Did God choose us? Did we choose God? Charles Spurgeon was asked, and this is what he says. He says, you don't. You don't recognize those true. You don't recognize friends. You don't, you don't reconcile friends. They're already friends. This is what he's talking about. Those truths, they are much bigger uh, for us to comprehend. And as I said last week, God is not going to, this is A.W. Tozer said, God is not going to hold us accountable whether or not we stood with Calvin or with, uh, with Jacobus. Uh, but what he's going to hold us accountable is, are we children of God? Uh, are we sons and daughters of God? That's what matters. Whatever side you find yourself. Some people, they are actually good. They will tell you everything what Calvin said. They will tell you everything what Armenia, uh, Jacobus said. Uh, but actually, the heart connect with God is not there. Uh, they will go into the arguments, but actually, they, are, they haven't got the presence of God inside of them. And so let's put all of that aside and allow Scripture to speak for us. So what I want to do this morning is simply sit in Scripture and, and let Scripture speak without having a foreknowledge or thinking, you know, what is it supposed to say? Oh, maybe it's this or that or that. But let's hear what Paul wrote here. When Paul wrote this letter to the church at Ephesus, can you imagine being the people receiving God's word for the first time. I, I just imagine for a few minutes, I just love to do that, to just picture myself and put myself in their shoes. Uh, were they crying when you open it up for the first time? Were they weeping? Wow, did God choose us? Did we, I mean, you know when you received um, that first letter that really ministered to you. you. You know how you felt, right? Even though some of them were not telling the truth, right? Because how many people, some of us have told us, you know, you are, you are everything. How did they feel when you begin to, re to read this letter? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And what Paul is saying is because of God's will that I'm actually writing this letter. It's not because of my own doing. I am an apostle for Christ because of Christ. Amen. And so he goes, you know, God is writing a story. And God is the main character of our lives. And we are privileged to be in the story of God. So God writes the story. Paul is privileged. And this is what Paul is bringing out. He's saying, listen, this is not about me. God is the, you know, I'm only doing this by the will of God. And this is what he's talking about here. So Paul says this, it's by the will of God that I'm an apostle. It's not my, for my glory. It's not so people can see me. Uh, but we are, God is the author of it all. And then he goes on to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. He goes on, verse 3, blessed be the God and, Lord, and, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us. Listen to those words. I just love listening to those words. He chose us. He blessed us. Hold on to those words. He, he, he chose us, it says. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us, adopting to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the, God, to the good pleasure of his will. It's amazing. I mean, I read that. I'm like, it's him choosing. It's him predestining us. It's him adopting us to sons. When I say sons, I mean sons and daughters. So it's his doing. It's all according to his will, not our will. Uh, th that blows my mind. As I said, I know me and you know you, that this God, he would go out of his way to choose you, to adopt you and say, I want you. I want you, in spite of, um, of, of you, in spite of your failing, he chose you. In spite of us, he predestined you. In spite of you, he adopted you. He, he called you his own. And the reason why, you know, um, 
You know, I, I say that he is willing to adopt us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 23, this is what it says. We eagerly await for uh, that day of adoption. And, and Romans is bringing out that there is going to be a day, the final day. Yes, we have been adopted, but we eagerly await for that day when you will hear it is official. You adopted now. You know, I don't know about you. It's like somebody, if you've ever been through the adoption process, they go through this process and it takes years and years to adopt somebody. And when it comes, that day you come to the court, you stand before a judge, you bring friends and you bring the whole family is there and you go before the judge and you're waiting to hear the judge say it is official. Until then. Yes, you know we're going to adopt. Yes, you know we're going to go for this. And yes, you're excited. But until that final day when it's actually made official. And so you are waiting for that. You wait to hear and then you hear. Congratulations. It is official. You are now a dad. You are now a mom. He's now your son. She's now your daughter. Everybody cries. Everybody cheers. You get so excited. I mean, just get that picture. The parents were incredibly committed before that, uh, that, that moment. The judges just made it official. And that's, that's the same here. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, what he did is, is what Scripture says, that, that the Holy Spirit sealed us. Uh, we were sealed. You know, there will be a day of judgment when we come before God. And God is like, he's the judge. And, and people in heaven are going to be there. And we are going to get before God. And we will hear God say, because of Jesus Christ, because you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it is official. You are adopted as sons and daughters of God. That, 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 that excites me for that day, to look forward to that day. Congratulations, the adoption is official because of Jesus Christ. What a glorious day that will be. And Paul is writing to the heart of the people. God chose you. I want you to know, God chose you. He predestined you. He adopted you. When we adopt, this is not a bad thing. This is just a reality. When we adopt... Uh, I don't know if you have noticed that when people adopt, we adopt with criteria. I was just chatting with people yesterday, and, and they were saying, yeah, you know, um, we ask questions when we adopt. Uh, is this a drug baby? Uh, are there complications with the baby? Uh, uh, how much is going to cost? And what sort of background do they come from? And, and all of those things. I'm not saying they're bad things. But we, we do it with criteria, Right. Come on, talk to me, please. Yeah, we do it with criteria, right? What is the background of this child? Where are they coming from? Do they have problems, health problems, or not? I want to know before I... I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but that's what we do. We want to know, you know, uh, you know when we ask these things, we have a criteria in mind that we, sh we want to meet. But when God adopts, when God adopts, here's the only question that God asks. Have you, have they received my son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for them? Have they given their lives? Have they asked Jesus? Have they surrendered themselves? If you have, with all your baggage, with all your brokenness, just come on in because Jesus has paid the price. Just come in as you are. You don't have to clean yourself up. You know, sometimes we have to clean ourselves up. I always struggle when I go to the dentist. I don't know many of you, you know, even when you go to the hygienist, you know. Uh, if you ever notice, you actually clean more than you usually do. Anybody? Is it just me? I, I, I just go and, you know, I, I don't want to go there and you go, to, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but Jesus doesn't do that with us. He says, if you have received the gift, the free gift of life that God has given us, if you have received that gift with all your brokenness, you can come in. You, you, you can come in with all your brokenness, you know, with all your sins. Uh, it's not, are they messed up? It's not, how much have you sinned? It's not, where have you sinned? What are you going to do tomorrow? It's not, how did you respond to this? It's not, oh, are you, what sort of family you come from? If you have my son, Jesus Christ, just come on in with all your baggage. Jesus paid the price. It's already paid. You don't need to pay the price twice. Hallelujah. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. 
uh, uh, that excites me, church, because I, I think, wow, you know, you bring your baggage. We come as broken people before God, and so he does that. And that's the way God does it. That's the way he does it with us. I don't know. It's hard to fathom for me. It's hard to accept, and it's hard to comprehend. The creator would do something like that, that he would say to me, with all your filthiness, come as you are, as long as you've received the free gift of life. And many of us say, no, 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 no. I don't want that kind of life. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to pay my price. You know, I'm happy to carry my baggage. And there are people, even in a church like this, who are still carrying the baggage. Some people have actually said yes to Jesus, but they're still holding on to the baggage. And Jesus is saying, I, I paid for all of that. You're his son. You're adopted. You're, you're in the family now. There are some adopted children they still struggle. Am I telling this thing, man? Uh, they still struggle um, with their new status. Have you ever noticed that? If you've ever been adopted, sometimes you wrestle. You still want to be there. Why did you do this? Ah. But when God adopts us, he wants us to be in. And some of you are fighting that adoption that God has done. It's sealed by the Spirit of God. You need to start acting like a son. When I say son, I told you, I mean sons and daughters. You need to start walking like a son. You need to start walking like a child of God. You need to accept the position that God has now given you, the new status that you have. And I love this whole idea that, you know, and it doesn't make sense to me. Why would God do that? Why would God adopt us if, when he knows our brokenness? Why would he choose me when he knows my shortcomings? Why would he choose me, you, when he knows the sort of life that you are, the things that you're wrestling with? Why would he choose you? Well, at the end of verse 4, it says he did it in love. But why would you, would you love me? Because I love you, God says. And, and uh, because I just do, you know, because you struggle with this and I struggle with this. I'm asking, but why, God? Why do you want to do this, God? I just do. I love you. And it used to bother me when my mom says that, you know, and, you know, ask it, but why? Just because, just because I say so. And God loves you, church. I, I, if you hear anything today, you are adopted. Now, you can actually be a son, a daughter who is messed up, uh, who actually, re a, a rebellious child, a rebellious daughter. You are adopted, but you can still be a rebellious daughter, a rebellious son, right? Have you ever seen them? Yeah, even in, in, in a family setup, even though you're in and you can even walk about and say, oh, you don't love me, and we project things, and we, we all of these dynamics, and God is saying, hey, 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 I adopted you. It's official. It's done. You're my son. Walk as a child of God. Amen. And so, um, with all our junk, he says, come on in. And, then so, and, and so when you look at this word chosen, predestined, adoption, please do not let your mind wander about who did, who, 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 who did, was it me, was it that? And I want to encourage you, who cares? Who cares who, 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 who chose who? Who really cares? All I want to know is, am I a child of God? That's what matters to me. That's what I spend my time focusing on. I don't care who did what. If you can spend your whole rest of your life worried about, oh, did God choose or did you? I, all I want to know is, am I a son? Am I a daughter? And if I'm in, I'm happy. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. He did, God did a mighty work through us. And, and, you know, and all I see when you read through scriptures is, I actually see you know, the verbs that show that he was the initiator, that God himself initiated when we were still on the outside. God himself was the initiator. In fact, God, you know, throughout scripture, you see, when you read in Genesis chapter 3, Adam, Adam in the garden, uh, they sinned, they tried to hide. Who speaks first? God, where are you? Where are you, Adam? 
God pursuing Adam. Where are you? God initiate. Genesis chapter 12 with Abraham. You know, you are going to be the father of many nations. Why? What, what did I do? Nothing. I am choosing you. I am choosing you for my glory, for my purposes. Exodus chapter 3, you see Moses himself, a burning bush, the guy, by the way, if you don't know the story, he's just been caught murdering somebody and he's caught and, and he's trying to cover it up and he's running away and he's wandering. Then in the midst of his wandering, he sees this burning bush and God says, Moses! And Moses, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Why would you want to come to me? You know what I've done? But God pursued Moses, even at the backside of the mountain. And Moses, you know, he's there and, 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 and yes, Lord, did I do, you know, what have I done? You know, he's thinking, is this really God? Have I had too many figs last night? Or what is actually going on? And God says, no, 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 no. I am the Lord. You know, uh, you know and, and he's, he's struggling with that whole thing. Who initiated that discussion? God initiated the discussion. Joshua, the book of Joshua. Listen, we can go all day just looking at the whole scripture. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua, you are inexperienced. You are not qualified, Joshua. Joshua, you are going to be scared, Joshua. You are going to be terrified, Joshua. Be courageous, be courageous, be courageous, be courageous, be courageous. Be very strong, Joshua. Joshua is like, why me, God? What have I done, God? What is it, God? I chose you. I'm choosing you. And, and if you stay with me, God is saying, if you keep the word in front of you, if you keep this word, Joshua, right in front of you, do not sway to the left or to the right. Joshua, I will be with you. You are going to be successful, Joshua. And I believe God is saying to many of us here today, keep the word, keep the word. You are going to be terrified. You are going to be thrown off course by situations and circumstances of life. Keep the word, keep the word, keep the word. Do not sway to the left. Do not sway to the right. Whether you like what the word is saying, keep to the word. Keep to the word. Joshua, you are going to be successful because I chose you. It didn't stop the church. First Samuel chapter 16, David as a shepherd is out in the wilderness. Hey, have you got more brothers? Go, go call him. Bring him up. Go call him. He's out in the wilderness. Go bring him up. Can you imagine David? I mean, come on, let's be real here. This is when I need the sound effects, my sister. We got to be real here. You can be honestly, uh, you can be assured that Josh, um, David stunk. He's a nobody. He's out. The, the, the real people, the real men, they're out there fighting. They're in the battleground. You just go and look after the, the, you know, the sheep. He's there. He's a shepherd boy. And he's there. He smells. He's probably not dressed well. And God says, go call him. Go call him. And, and so they go and they call this, you know, uh, you know he, he, this guy who's not impressive at all. You know, uh, he, he was just a shepherd for goodness sake. But God says, I choose you. There's some of us here. I was going to say we stink, but I didn't say that, right? But God still initiates the discussion and he says, I choose you. I look at myself, my own life. I was broken. I was out. The church didn't want me. Church almost pushed me over. I mean, if you know that the church is good at doing things like that. And God used one man. He says, no. And all you could hear was God saying, I choose you. I choose you. I choose you. And I wrestled with that whole thought for many years and I struggled. I still do sometimes. And I have to remind myself, it's nothing to do with me, church. Whether Calvin says what he says, whether, you know, Jacoba says what he says, I don't care. All I care is what he says in his word. And that's what I go by. God chose us. Who initiated the discussion? God initiated it. Let me keep going for a bit. The book of Jeremiah, 
God initiated Jeremiah chapter 1. He went to Jeremiah. Isaiah, God initiated. Ezra, God initiated. All, I mean, Nehemiah, God initiated. The 12 disciples, who initiated? God initiated the world. For God so loved the world, who initiated? God initiated. When we were out, God initiated all of this. It's all God. It's all God. No doubt, it's all God. He is the initiator. He is the one that gets all the glory. Nothing of us. He initiates the discussion. Uh, we, we, we know, I, I'm just thankful to God to being, for being part of the story. We are, we are just thankful for being part of the story. We are not the main character in the story. God is the main character. We are privileged. It's an honor for us even to stand here, Matt, that we can stand and worship God and lead God's people. We are honored. We don't deserve to stand up here. It doesn't mean that we are any special. We stand here because of his grace that he has extended to us. And we have to walk as such. And we have to understand that we were out and he brought us in. It's not because we went to school. It's not because we are so clever. It's, 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 we are in because he, grace has been extended to us. And so when you see a brother, a sister out there who is not yet in, church, please, let's understand that grace was extended to us. When you test grace, you are able to extend it to others because you know you don't deserve what God has given to you. And so when you understand that you don't deserve, you are able to deal with others the way God has dealt with you. When you haven't experienced or tested the grace of God, we are going to be shooting one another. We are going to struggle, church. But when you understand, say, God, I was out. I was destined to die and go to hell. And you helped me. You forgave me, not because of what I've done, but because you, you loved me and you extended grace and you forgave me, God. How, how can I not extend that to my brother, my sister? God, forgive me, God. Because many times, you know, I, 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 I treat others in a harsh way. I treat others in a horrible way. Even when they wrong me, God, help me to respond the way that you have responded to me. With grace. And, and so we are privileged, church. We are privileged. So again, I say here, you know, um, when you look at these scriptures, I want to be sure I say this thing. We see God's portion played right in the, um, you know, right earlier on. You know, God started saying in earlier on, adoption. You're adopted. You're chosen. You're predestined. And you see that. But let me just say this. God's sovereignty does not negate man's responsibility. Uh, God's sovereignty does not negate Men's responsibility. You still have a responsibility in all of this. Yes, we were chosen, but we have a responsibility to walk in it. We have a responsibility to walk in it. Look at verse 7. What does this mean? Uh, let's look at verse 7. And I get so excited, church. And, and this is where also you can get excited, you know. Um, and I just read this, you know, and, and I was sort of like, I, we can just read this without preaching because he chose us, because he, he adopted us, because he predestined us. And what does this mean? Here's what it means, verse 7. In verse 7 it says, in him we have what? Redemption, church. We have what? Redemption. In him, we have redemption. And that's not a small thing, church. We have redemption in him because of Jesus Christ. And you know, I feel like sometimes as Christians, we have this spiritual credit card. Uh, you know, sometimes I have to put that thing sometimes. They say, I don't want to see that thing. I mean, if you don't like credit cards, I don't like credit cards. Just a few. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. All of us should not like credit cards um, because they're, they're a bad thing, is it? They make you spend what you don't have. But you know, sometimes as Christians, I feel like we, are, we, are, we don't understand what we have in Christ. It's like somebody who's got a spiritual credit card. Um, Mr. Combs, please. Uh, it's like somebody who doesn't understand uh, they've got this spiritual credit card. 
and they've got this spiritual credit card and God says, you're a son, you can spend it. But we still, I don't know, you know, let me just say this. You know, remember people during the war, uh, and many people there to serve people, things, and I remember talking to, a, you know, to Dolly, and, and she used to say, you know, we had to serve everything and put things aside and all of that. And many people got stuck in that mentality that actually their, their whole mentality was, no, let's just save what we have and, and just guard what we have. They may actually be living in a rough way and doesn't mean they don't have but they got stuck and sometimes as Christians we're like that God says hey I've blessed you you are blessed but we live with a poverty mentality and the poverty mentality just tells you oh oh and poor me look at me and you're always scrounging when God has given you this amazing spiritual credit spiritual credit card and he says hey 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 when you don't have anything, take it to God. I'm a son. You're a son. You're a daughter. You can go to him and say, God, we're having a problem with this. What do we do, God? And he says, okay, I got this one. Don't fight things that are not yours. Let God deal with things. Amen. And, and so we see this coming up and I'm coming, I'm, I'm, you know, and I want to also say, I, 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 I was saying that God wants to bless us. I have to talk about this um, and make this very clear. Whenever I get a chance to kick the false gospel, I will take it. And so this is one of those moments. Uh, you know, the false gospel of Jesus, of, of, of the false gospel um, of, uh, you know, of Jesus, the false gospel that's sometimes preached out there, it says this, when you follow God, everything. How many of you have heard that gospel? Even on our TVs, right? The God channel. Oh, just, you know, you know touch the screen right now. And, and everything is going to come your way. And you're going to receive. And you're going to do this. You're not going to go through problem. That is the false gospel. Prosperity gospel is a false gospel. Does God want to bless us? Yes, absolutely. But, you know. Sometimes as children of God, and I, I've read the scriptures, I've looked at it, each and every one of them, many men and women, they went through difficulties. Many of them were beheaded. John the Baptist, many of the disciples were hanged upside down for following Jesus. And I, I don't see many men and women in the Bible driving the Lamborghinis you know, uh, for them to say, actually, they are in the presence of, no, no offense to driving, please do drive it, and if you want to buy the pastor, go ahead, let, not let anybody stop you. Uh, but what I'm saying is, um, all men and women in the Bible, where did they end up? They ended up six feet down under. They love God. But what I'm saying is, we have to move away from this whole idea and following God. Don't come here looking for what God can do for you. Looking and saying, I want to just press, you know, you know blessing, blessing, blessing. Worship God for who he is. My Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything will be added, but the first is the seeking. Amen, right? And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish off there. Um, before I became a Christian, let me just read verse 9 and then I can go into my story. Uh, verse 9 says, having made known to us the mystery of his will. And, and what does that mean? It means that he gives us this re revelation. And, and because this is what, the, I want to share this because he gives us insight into the will through spiritual discernment, uh, through the Holy Spirit who guides us. Now, for the longest time in my walk with God, and I'll give you an example because I was a Christian and I would pray God, you know, I would pray for God's will, you know, uh, and I would ask God, what's your will for my life? And many people ask that question. It's a million dollar question. What is God's will for my life? And, and I was asking God for that. And I was saying, God, what is the will? What is your will, God? And I needed to understand what I didn't understand is that it is the spirit of God who reveals the will of God. And, and so I need, first of all, to be 
filled. Sister Clarice helped us last week. Sister Clarice, thank you so much. Remind us again that actually we have to be filled by the Spirit on an ongoing basis. That it's not something that we do today and then tomorrow we say, oh, we were filled last week. Many of us, we go by how we were filled 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years ago. And we are long dry and the, the Spirit, the glory of God, the presence is already departed and you are still thinking God is here, God is here, God has moved. We got to be filled with the Spirit, and it is the Spirit. He is the is the one. The Spirit Himself. He is the one who reveals the purposes of God, the will of God. If you're asking what is God's will for my life, go after the Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me. When He fills you, I'm telling you, He will take you. He will change you. He will put you on the path. He will lift you up and say, Yes, this is where you belong, and you find your footing in that. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We thank you, God. Thank you that we have inheritance in you, God. Thank you, Father, that verse 11, you know, 13 reminds us that we are sealed with you, God. We thank you for your presence, Lord. Lord, help us to walk as sons and daughters. We want to be used by you for your glory. In the name of Jesus. My, one of my friends, um, they adopted um, in Uganda, they adopted this girl, and this girl, she was just literally bones. Literally, like, just bones, you know, and, and, and you have seen a big stomach and, and, and just malnourished child. And, 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 and they, are, they, they, you know, it's a white couple, and they, you know, the, you know God led them, and they managed to adopt this girl. And when you see the picture of the girl, you know, when they were shown, it, it moved me because they came to me and they were praying with them and we were, you know, you know uh, uh, and, and just supporting them through that. And they said, yeah, we want this baby. We feel led that we should take this baby. And so they took that baby. When you look at the girl now, you know, she's, she's grown up and all changed and all that. I went to the house with the, with the, with the father one day. Uh, the father is white, and this is a black child. And, um, and, 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 and the girl opened the door. And when they, when she opened the door, daddy, 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 and sort of hugged the daddy, and the daddy picked the daughter, and oh, they kissed and all that, and they put it down, and just seeing it, I, I was like, wow, uh, that picture stayed with me. The girl doesn't see the skin color of the daddy. Uh, for, for her, you are my daddy. Uh, I don't see you as this person who is a white man or this. You are my daddy. And I got thinking about that church. I got thinking and I was thinking, wow. Do you know when God chose you, you only call him daddy because he chose you. You, you know, you, 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 <sighs> with all our failures, with all our weaknesses, he chose us when we were skins, uh, when just skins, that's wrong. When we were just skin and bones, he still chose us. And now we are able to say, Abba, Father, because of his choosing. Uh, that, you know, uh, that girl, whenever I see her, it reminds me and I say, you didn't love God first. You only call God Abba Father, because he loved you first. And, and um, I can't comprehend that, church. There are some of us here who struggle. You know, you are hard to love. You find it difficult to love. Mainly because of the experiences of where you have been and, and, and things that we have experienced. And we struggle to be loved. God says, I love you, and da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da. It's all here. Now, our heart is still disconnected from that truth. I love the picture of my friend and the daughter when I see them. There is no, the girl, there is no nothing sort of that sort of hindrance or blockage. You know, the color doesn't come in at all. They don't see color. And I'm like, God, that's where I want to be with you. 
I don't want to be a child who looks and questions, am I really loved? Am I different? Why am I different? And why is this and that? And this and that. I want to see my daddy as, that's my daddy. He came for me when nobody else could. And that's what God does with us. And so I want to encourage you today, if you're one of those people and you don't know how to accept love, and all you know is abuse, verbal, physical, all you know is neglect, it's not your fault. And I want to just tell you today, it is not your fault. We have a father in heaven who doesn't want to leave you the way you are. He wants to adopt you today. Uh, there's, there's, we're going to have adoption right now. God loves you. He loves you as hard as it is to accept for some of us. And what's crazy is that that love changes everything about us. And we now have an inheritance in Christ Jesus. And so God wants to change the trajectory of your life, the posture of your life, and he wants to change all of that. Church, I wanted to encourage you to just let the word marinate in your heart today. Will you ac allow God to adopt you today to be truly a child of God?